Hey, Derek here for Tech Time. In this video, I'm doing a rundown on how to connect the MX Keys Mini to devices, demo the speed of the easy switch feature when switching between three devices, as well as show you the value of the customizable function keys and how to customize them for different applications. Let's get started. Okay, now it's time to take the keyboard for a test drive and connect it to the computer. Uh, so first up, we want to go to the website and download the application. So we go to the Logitech, click on support, you'll see Logitech options. You want to download this app. There's only a version for Windows or Mac, although it does say link for another version. That actually goes just to a page of saying there isn't another version. So anyway, download your Windows or Mac for your computer. And once you've downloaded it, uh, you can install it. And I've already done that. I'm just going to open up the application right now. And you see here it is. And uh, I've got a couple of other devices. I've also connected an old K380. Uh, I just tested, it doesn't kind of work. Some of the keys don't work, so I'm not gonna go too much into that one. Other to say that the, I just wanted to see how well it um, switched uh, the easy switch. And it actually is very comparable in speed to the K3, to the MX Keys Mini. Now let's add the MX Keys Mini. Firstly, we want to turn on this device. So we're going to switch that on. And you see that's going to be on there. And um, I'm going to add device here. We're going to connect via Bluetooth in this case. And you want to select, you got to choose which device you want to set it to. So I'm going to link it to number one. And as you see, when I click on that for a at least three seconds, it's suddenly going to blink very fast, and this means it's in pairing mode. And if we scroll down here, there it is. It shows up in my Bluetooth preferences panel. I click connect, and then I have to type in this number, 7555558, and enter. And now it's connected. Okay, now I can go back and it should be here, there it is. So right in here is where I can get into the settings. I got the serial number. Um, you've got this uh, general setting where do you want to use F1, F2 keys as standard function keys? Now if you select this as yes, then basically in order to change devices, you're gonna have to press the function key to get access to the special functions. Otherwise, they're going to be using a standard function keys, whatever your machine is uh, allocated to those notes. So I'm just going to keep that off. Um, of course, uh, being a Mac user, I'm going to keep this on. Uh, I want backlighting and I want the battery saving mode. Okay, so they're the main things. We've got the easy switch and you can see I've already connected to my iPad and my, um, my iPhone as well. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I've got the keyboard connected to my MacBook Pro, my iPad, and my iPhone. And we're gonna test the easy switching feature between the three devices. We're gonna start off with the MacBook Pro, pressing number one, gonna type in hello. There you go. Device number two is the iPad. There's a little slight lag. Press number three, the iPhone. And you notice there, there is about a two, three second lag. If I wanna go back now, back to the computer, you see how much of a lag there is. Go to the iPad, I'm deleting, deleting. Yeah, it's about three seconds. If I go back to the iPhone, yeah, it's about three seconds. So you just need to be a little bit patient when you switch between them. Um, I previously did think it was quite instantaneous, but I don't know whether it has to do with uh, electromagnetic interference or radio interference, Bluetooth interference. I have a lot of electric gear around here. Um, if you have a different uh, experience, do let me know. But in my environment here, it's taking about three, two, three seconds to switch between them. Key thing is, if you wanna make sure that you can type straight in, you of course must be in the application and that the cursor needs to be ready to go. Otherwise, you do need to move your cursor or open the correct application and move the mouse to the correct location where you want to start typing, and then it'll work. One of the really cool things about this keyboard is it's got some really useful functions built into the function keys. Plus, you can customize them. Let's just have a quick look at the existing functions that they have assigned. First up, you can see the first two buttons here that can be customizable. 
are the backlight down and up. You can see my backlights are on right now. I can actually turn them off, which is probably good if you wanna save energy, especially during the day, or I can pick them up. You can also notice that the backlight is actually location or it's sensitive to when your hands are near. You can see it just went off right now, but as soon as I bring my hands to the keyboard, the lights automatically go on. So that's a really cool feature as well of the backlight. Next up, we've got dictation. So if I click on this, and let me just bring up a note application, you can see it can actually dictate. For some reason, there's something wrong with my dictation, so it's not actually working. It was working five minutes ago, but right now it's not. But trust me, um, when you click this, it will turn it on and off, and then it will uh, transcribe whatever you're saying. So that's really good to have quick access to that when you wanna, you maybe have some great ideas on the top of your head, you wanna get it down as quickly as possible, you can't type as fast as you think, then you can use the dictation button, that could be super useful. The other thing I really love is it's got an emoticon button and gives me direct access to the emoticon menu. Now this is really useful. Previously I was trying to use some another way that there, there was some kind of a, a world function that allowed me to access it, but always took really a long time. This is super responsive and comes up straight away. So that that's really cool to get quick access to all my emoticons. Um, the next thing that we've got here is a screen capture. Now. I'm just gonna go in here and click on screen capture because there's actually some features that you can customize. You can have it that it screen captures the whole screen, a particular window, so you can select a window. So example, if I have this linked up right here with the window, I've got it saved to a clipboard, um, or you can actually have it saved to your desktop as a PNG file. So right now I've got it as window clipboard, we'll see how this works. I just click on this and I can just select which window and just say I wanna copy this and just say I wanna paste it right here. And there you go, so simple and quick. This is gonna be a major time saver for me. Um, you can also select a region, in which case when you click on this, you can select the region. And then when I paste it here, you'll see it's only that spot. So that's really useful, uh, the screen capture button. All right, next up we've got the mute unmute mic. Now when I actually click here, you'll see right up in the right hand corner, you'll see that the mic is off. You got this little red warning sign. Now the funny thing is this mic button doesn't always switch off your mic to all the applications. So just be careful, but it does, it is if I have a look at right here, you can see that there is no volume there, but if I click it again, it actually registers my voice. Um, it's meant to be a system-wide thing, but for some reason, when I tried it on Zoom, it didn't actually mute it. So you don't wanna go in with a mistake thinking that you're muted and then say something that you probably didn't wanna say and have your listeners or your meeting people hear it. So just test that for yourself. On my machine, it doesn't actually, it's not fully global. So I'm actually gonna show you how to create a specific localized function key for the mute for the Zoom. So we'll go into that very shortly. Next up, we've got the play pause button. So this is really useful for uh, pretty much uh, playing pause. So if you've got uh, Apple Music or some music application. So this is really good, a little media control here. Press play, plays, pauses. Let's see if it actually works if I'm not actually in the application, if I'm somewhere else. If I press play, <laughs> yep, it still works. So it seems like it doesn't matter what app you're on, um, it's responsive to that as long as you've got a media player on, which is pretty cool. Finally, you've got uh, three sound controls, which are really useful. Mute, when you don't want the sound, you wanna cut the, off the sound straight away, or you can adjust the volume loud and softer just using these keys. So that's super useful to have those keys built in to the, uh, to the keyboard. Now, let's have a quick look at the uh, ability to customize the keys, which is very cool. If I click on here, I actually have the option of making this backlight down something else. So if you don't ever really wanna play with the backlight, you wanna just leave it on thing, you can actually assign this button to a bunch of other stuff. And you've got all these global type of um, system-wide settings that you can assign that button to. So that is really useful. Um, and you can pretty much, all these actions are assignable to any of these keys. 
Now, what is especially useful is that you can make some very specific application um, changes. So here I've actually just created a couple, just to give you an example. I've got Evernote here. And if I wanna have a look at the Evernote keys, I've actually assigned this key here to help me, these two keys to help me quickly access making the font smaller or bigger. Okay, so I've made this one smaller and made this one bigger. And if I go in here into uh, Evernote, I'm just gonna test here. This is a test, okay. Return, now I wanna make it smaller. I just press this key. How cool is that? I have quick access to making the font bigger or smaller, rather than always having to come up here and change and switch. So this can be a quick access for that, can be quite useful. I mean, pretty much any keyboard shortcuts you can assign to these buttons. The other thing I did was just to show you was Zoom. Now I mentioned to you when I did the Zoom, here in the Zoom meeting, you can see the mic is working here right now. However, when I actually press the no microphone button, you'll see that that is off. It's still on here globally, I don't know why, uh, but I think what happens is, well, actually I do. Basically, when you're in a specific app, those will override the global settings. So right now this is working, press it again, it's unmute. So this is really useful to be able to assign specific buttons to specific features of any application as long as there is a shortcut. So that's definitely something I'm gonna be using um, with my Zoom. So I haven't uh, gone and explored all my other apps. I haven't quite worked out which are the kind of features that I wanna have quick access to. But if you know what yours are, you can quickly set them all up and pretty much all these buttons can have unlimited uses depending on the app because you've got access to apply, add as many apps as you want. So that's really cool. Um, so one of the really, really cool features I didn't really play with previously. I've had the MX, uh, the MX keys Mac in the past. I haven't really used those keys, but now that I've kind of discovered it this time around doing this review, I'm definitely gonna use that. So that's it for customization. Well, I hope you found the video valuable. If there's anything I missed, or if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. I've also included direct links to the best prices I've found on Amazon on the MX Keys Mini. Do note, I am an affiliate, which means Amazon pays me a small percentage of the purchase price when you use my links. However, the key thing is you won't be paying any more and you're helping me keep creating content. Thanks in advance. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss any new videos from me.